Chops here now is Andrew Gruel, chef and restaurant owner. Andrew, great to see you. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. You know, the last time I heard from uh, anybody in the in the hospitality industry is when the hotels were being forced to take in the homeless, uh, whether they liked it or not. And they were saying the, the, the people governing don't seem to care whether these businesses survive or not. I mean, is this is this measure going to hurt a lot of businesses? Could it cause some to fail? Yeah, I think that right now we can obviously speculate on the effects that it's going to have on restaurants. But I think we should also take a step back and kind of define what this bill is about, because the headline doesn't always match what's inside the bill. We've seen that. That's the trend, right? I mean, Inflation Reduction Act, you actually yeah. start to look inside that bill and you're spending <laughs> billions of dollars on Pakistani badminton research and development yes. or trying to save the blue-footed booby. But what this really comes down to is, is that, you know, we all agree. I, I actually don't know anybody in this industry who doesn't think think that fast food workers should garner a lot more respect, should be paid more. And there are situations where workplace safety is an issue and there are wage theft violations. But there's actually certain penalties in place right now within the framework of California law, which we know is not light, that penalizes those businesses. And I can even say that a lot of the people that I've seen that run businesses that treat their workers that way always go out of business. And I applaud the fact they go out of business because mm. that's the free market penalizing the people that don't treat their workers well. But what this bill actually does is that it establishes a council, a 10-person council, where you've got unelected state officials that right. are running your business. They're establishing and setting certain standards and pay, right? They're establishing an economic framework for your business that you have to abide by. And while right now they say, oh, well, it only affects the major corporations, there's going to be unintended consequences where this trickles down to a lot of the smaller businesses who are now going to have to compete with $22, $23, $24 an hour, where the the big businesses are paying, and they're not going to be able to afford that because they might be in a mm. small town or a small community. And let me so let me just I let don't... me just interrupt for a second here because what you're saying essentially is that there's no feedback. I mean, they're, they're unelected bureaucrats who not only have no experience in the private sector and don't understand what profit margins are, and if you if you go above the profit margin in terms of regulatory costs, you have to go out of business. Not only is there that, but there's no, they're not elected, so there's no feedback they get from their constituents. Well, just imagine putting all of your money, 100% everything, you risk your whole family out on the line, and then suddenly you've got these people that weren't elected that step in, and they tell you how you have to run your business, literally from the inside. Now, look, uh, keep in mind, uh, we pay 5 to $10 above minimum wage. We raised over five, dollars $600,000 for out-of-work and struggling restaurant workers, not restaurants, restaurant workers throughout the pandemic. I am the biggest voice of reason for workers' rights, workers' wages, et cetera. But I do think that this is not the right way to get there. I think businesses who pay their workers $20, $25, $30 an hour, or at least, you know, kind of that MIT living wage standard, should be rewarded by getting the payroll taxes cut, which also, yeah. those payroll taxes hurt the workers workers themselves cut the payroll taxes so it's a net right. zero to the bottom line and by the workers way, get more money I'm, I'm just wondering how much money these un, unelected bureaucrats are making I'm sure they're not doing poorly and and you, you have no. a 100 billion dollar operating surplus that the state of California just got because of all the money that they've gotten from these these Silicon Valley businesses etc uh, and yet you have this energy crisis now which I'm sure is cutting into into your cost as well, because you got to pay a lot more for energy than you used to if you can get it at all. We only have 15 seconds, but what do you think of the job they're doing? I don't, I don't understand how, how the governor keeps his job with all this. In, in 2018, they said $150 billion to help them fix the grid. They had a $100 billion surplus, and they did nothing with it. Yeah, it was a $50 billion delta, but they could have made some way with that. That's just me. I'm not an energy expert. <laughs> no, but it's, it's just, I, again, you should be judged on the basis of the quality of your work. I don't see a lot of quality in the work of this particular government, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. Well, good luck to you. I hope you can keep your business. You. Andrew, good to see you. Andrew Gruel.